In the last class, we were discussing about the diode characteristics. We have seen how the diffusion of uh, holes from the N side, from the P side into the N side, and the diffusion of the electrons from the N side into the onto the P side, and uh, contribute for a huge amount of current when the diode is forward biased, and as a result. When the diode is forward biased, with a very small voltage drop across the diode, the diode allows a huge amount of current. These injected carriers, which were the majority carriers on either side, uh, on the, say for example, the holes on the P side, after getting injected into the uh, N type, so there they become minority carriers, huge amount of minority carriers. And these are now drifted by applying the external potential by the external uh, the field due to the external potential uh, drifts these minority carriers the, uh, after diffusion they become minority carriers on the, on the other side and they are drifted by the field and then as a result there will be huge amount of current. Well on the other side when we apply the reverse potential the current is only due to the minority carrier and in the example which we have taken earlier uh, with when the doping profile is doping concentration is 10,000 uh, times more than the intrinsic carrier concentration, we found that the uh, uh, majority carrier concentration is of the order of 10 to the power of 13, whereas the minority carrier concentration is of the order of 10 to the power of 7. Therefore, the current ratios would be in that order. So, if the forward, uh, in the forward direction, the current is very high, in the reverse direction, the current would be very small. Okay. Therefore, the diode acts like uh, almost like an open circuit because it allows only a, a very small amount of current, which is of the order of 1 nanoampere in the case of silicon diodes. Okay. Now, let us continue the discussion and look at this plot. So, typically, so this is the plot of a diode with, uh, if it is a silicon diode at point, above 0.6 volts, the, uh, with, with a small increase in the voltage across it, the current increases, whereas in the reverse direction here, up to a high amount of uh, voltage, depending on the construction, it may be 10 volts or 20 volts or 5 volts, uh, the diode breaks down and so there would be a huge amount of current again. So this is the characteristics of the diode, uh, of a typical diode with the volt ampere relationship given in this fashion. Now, uh, when temperature rises, we have seen that uh, uh, with, temp rather, with temperature, this I naught varies. I naught is a function of the temperature, absolute temperature. So that means with temperature, we expect the uh, uh, the reverse saturation current to vary, and thereby the voltage current relationship also to vary with temperature. And please note that uh, here itself we have a huge amount of temperature <coughs> variation maybe from uh, 7 to 8 degrees Celsius to about 45 degrees Celsius is the variation. 
And uh, if you go to polar regions, and uh, why polar regions? Uh, thickly habitated regions like uh, the northern uh, areas, the temperature goes down to sub zero degrees Celsius. And if the electronics is, uh, is being used in an industry where the furnace heating is present, the temperature may be as high as even 50 degrees centigrade and very close to the furnaces it may go even farther up. So because of such a huge variation in temperature, it is important that the electronic circuits also work properly. And uh, if the temperature is limited by the manufacturer for an electronic circuit like some computers earlier, so we were saying that these computers require air conditioning. Won't they work only in an air conditioned environment. So when the air conditioning is uh, not present because of power dissipation, <coughs> there would be a lot of temperature rise and the uh, circuit may not behave properly. So this kind of restrictions keep coming in unless you design a circuit uh, to uh, work in varied uh, temperature environments. So it is important that the circuits work at different temperatures. Now let us see this simple device like a diode, how its characteristics varies with temperature. Uh, I naught, the reverse saturation current, so gets doubled for, for every 10 degrees centigrade rise in temperature or it varies by 7 percentage, 7 percentage for 1 degree rise, 1 degree centigrade rise in temperature. That is a, a huge amount, it's, that means the reverse saturation current is highly sensitive to temperature. Now with this kind of variation, so you will find that the volt ampere characteristics also varies like this. If this is the case at uh, say 25 degrees centigrade, so the characteristics may be like this at say minus 50 degrees centigrade and that higher temperature than this, the characteristics goes up like this. Like at 150 degrees centigrade, so this is the characteristics for the diode. So this is how the temperature varies. So if you substitute this variation in of I naught, that means doubling for every 10 degrees centigrade rise, if you substitute in the expression above, you will find this difference. <coughs> For instance, if I give you the voltage as Vs, uh, say 0.65 volts and I naught as 1 nano ampere and you know that Vt is of the order of 26 millivolts and eta is equal to 2 for silicon, you can find out how much is the current corresponding to 0.65 volts of voltage <coughs> applied across it. Now if the temperature is raised from say 25 degrees centigrade to say 55 degrees centigrade, then I naught would be instead of 1 nano, nano ampere here, it will be 4 times now because the increase in the temperature is 2 decades is by 2 decades. Therefore, the I naught would be 4 nano amperes. So with 4 nano amperes, you can find out how much is the rise in the current I. So it would be, it would also be of the order of 4 times, okay. So this is what happens with uh, rising temperature. Any questions on the diode characteristics and its? So the breakdown voltage increases or decreases with temperature? 
there won't be an appreciable change in the breakdown potential because of the difference in the uh, whole electron pair intrinsically generated whole electron pair there would be a small amount of minority charge carrier variation this is one and number two the uh, energy band gap also changes with temperature slightly varies with temperature because of which there would be some amount of change in the uh, breakdown potential so but then it is not appreciable it's not much any other question there is a mathematical formula for the um, I naught. Yes, there is a mathematical formula for I naught in terms of uh, the diffusion constant, mobility, etc. There is a formula, and uh, there is a derivation uh, through which it can be arrived at. So, since it is beyond uh, the uh, purview of your class, that is not done here. It is available in the textbooks which are uh, whose list is given to you. <coughs> With this now let us uh, take up the diode circuits. So now we are uh, coming to the application of diode. So let us consider a diode in a simple circuit like this, a simple circuit with a single loop. So let us consider, let us use a diode here and a load resistance and let us apply some excitation or apply some voltage here and this is the load resistance RL. It's a very simple circuit. And what kind of voltage we get across the load resistance? So this may be a motor or it may be a bulb, okay, for which the voltage is passing through the diode, okay. So load resistance means something like that, some utility equipment which loads the supply. And we have, we are using a diode in the circuit here, right. Typically, such loads are uh, resistive by nature, which whose uh, volta volt, uh, volt ampere relationship is drawn by the Ohm's law. So, let us consider a simple load resistance RL and see the look at the circuit what happens here. If you apply Kirchhoff's voltage law here. And the voltage drop across the diode is Vd. So, by the relationship, and if the current passing through is I, then the Kirchhoff's voltage law says that Vi is equal to so Vd plus IRL. So, this is one equation applying Vi, we are interested in finding out V naught or the current. Now here we have two variables V D and I, two variables V I is given and R I R L is given, we are interested in finding out I. How do we solve it? Well, V D and I are related by, by this function here, look at this. So this is the function which governs V D and I. The mathematical expression for this is this. I used the symbol VD there and I used V here, but both are same. Please note that both are same. So this is the relationship. So I is a function of V. So that is given by the diode characteristics. Now how do you determine? So that is one equation. So VD is a function of R. I is a function of VD and the function is known. It is known graphically by the characteristics. It is known mathematically by that exponential equation. Now that is the second equation and this is the first equation. Now solving these two equations, we can find out uh, for a given VI and for a given RL, how much of I would be a, uh, the resulting 
and how much would be Vd? So we have to solve these two equations. How to do it graphically? Given a characteristics, we can do it graphically. When two equations are given to you and you are asked to find out the point for which these two equations are valid, so the, uh, you know that the point is point of intersection is the solution of the equation. So now we have one equation given here, Vd as a function of i and now let us draw the other equation also on this or the other equation also on this and the intersection point will give us the solution Vd and i at which the diode is operating. So now <laughs> this equation is in terms of Vd and i, please note that this is a straight line equation in terms of Vd and i. So this equation, so when plotted it would be like this, this is a straight line equation and this is a straight line and Vd is equal to Vi when i is equal to 0, this is the i axis when i is equal to 0, so Vd is equal to Vi is one point. So Vi 0 is one point on the straight line and Vi by Rl <coughs> is the other point on the straight line, 0 and Vi by RL is the other point on the straight line. So what is the operating point? Naturally, so this is the operating point. So then this diode works with this particular Vd and this particular I. So this is the operating point. I repeat, we have found this by solving these two equations and that is done graphically here. So this is a straight line equation governed by Vi is equal to Vd plus IRL, that equation. And this is the uh, I is equal to F of Vd, this is this plot. <coughs> this F is that uh, exponential equation which I have given in the uh, given previously. So now this is the operating point. So once you know I and once you know Vd, from equation, from the first equation, we can find out how much output voltage we get. So this is one way of uh, determining the currents and the, uh, and the voltages when you use such a nonlinear device like this diode in circuits. Well, this is a graphical method. So mathematical method is another method which is straightforward. So that can be obtained by solving this equation and the exponential equation, okay? So this can also be used. So this line is known as load line because it depends on RL. The slope of this line is minus 1 by RL. It depends on the load resistance. Therefore, it is known as <coughs> load line and this can be used to determine the operating point. There is another very interesting way of analyzing uh, active circuits involving an active device like a diode. So that is by piecewise linearization of the characteristics. So the characteristics of the diode can be can be represented by this kind of piecewise linear characteristics. Whereas the actual characteristics is like this. So whereas the actual characteristics is by this dotted red line, we can make it piecewise linear with the objective of representing it by <coughs> linear equations, so make it piecewise linear. And with this voltage given by the cutting voltage and with this obtained by 
the slope of the characteristics, the characteristics. So, by first expressing it in this kind of piecewise linear characteristics and representing it by an equivalent circuit. Let us see so what is the equivalent circuit of the of the diode after this piecewise linearization. Without piecewise linearization, it is a nonlinear device and you cannot represent it by voltage sources, resistances, etc. Now, once you linearize it, so you can represent it by resistances and voltage sources. For instance, you take this branch of uh, the characteristics with this line. Let me reproduce it here. So, with this line, this line. How do you represent this? What kind of circuit yields you? So, this kind of characteristics. Do not you think the resistance in series with a source with V gamma? So, it gives you this kind of characteristics. When the applied voltage V i is more than V gamma, what kind of current flows through the circuit? What is the current flowing through the circuit? I is equal to V i minus V gamma by R. Do not you think this characteristics is that? If V is this, if this is V, if this is V gamma, so do not you think the current that is flowing through is proportional to V minus V gamma because this equation is a straight line. Hence, so this equation can be represented by this kind of expression. And what kind of circuit exhibits this kind of expression? So, this circuit, say, this circuit exhibits this kind of expression. Of course, this is valid when V i is V more than V gamma. So, this is valid when V i is beyond V gamma and V i is more than V gamma. So, when V i is more than V gamma here, so this is V i. So, then the relationship is linear relationship like this. With the slope of the curve given by given by 1 by r. So, the slope is 1 by r. It is very interesting. First, the characteristics is linearized by an approximate linear function <coughs> and we have <coughs> written down an equation for it. So, the equation is something like this. So, V i minus V gamma divided by something, something like a resistance is uh, so with some term with units as resistance is giving rise to the current i. Okay. So, therefore, this is the equation of this line. What is the circuit equivalent for this? So, this is the circuit equivalent for this. So, this kind of circuit gives you this kind of equation. Hence, uh, the diode can be approximated to this kind of circuit when the input voltage is more than V gamma. That is the interesting conclusion. <coughs> from this. This is an approximation no doubt, but please note that that approximation is very closely valid because this characteristics can be very closely approximated by this linear equation, right. So, this is I repeat is applicable for V i greater than V gamma. Well, 
when vi is less than v gamma, what is the characteristics? So, when vi is less than v gamma, the characteristics can be approximated by another straight line whose slope is very small. Please note that, so this characteristics can be approximated by a function, a straight line of this type. So, this is valid up to V gamma. So, beyond that it is, it is represented by this, this straight line. And on the negative side up to what voltage this is applicable? Up to a voltage of Vz that breakdown potential. So, this is applicable. So, that means, so when Vz is less than or equal to V i less than or equal to V gamma. So, this is the straight line equation. The, the diode characteristics can be approximated by this straight line equation. So, it is a straight line equation between voltage and current passing through the origin. So, what is it? What kind of circuit element gives you this kind of character? Simply a resistance. So, a diode can be represented by a simple resistance and this resistance is it same as the previous resistance? So, this resistance value is very large because for a huge amount of voltage the current is very small. So, this is applicable under reverse bias therefore, this can be represented by R r. The small r indicates, the suffix r indicates under reverse bias. So, this is the equivalent circuit of the resistance under reverse direction. And to indicate in the, uh, the resistance in the forward direction, so let us indicate it by R f in the equivalent circuit. Hence, the diode can be represented by a resistance in series with a voltage, a resistance R f in series with a voltage source whose value equal to V gamma as long as the input voltage is greater than V gamma. And it can be represented by a simple resistance of a large value that is R r when the input voltage is less than V gamma and of course, more than the V z, the breakdown potential which is negative. Okay. So, what we have done now is simply represented a diode by a simple circuit. Well, we do not have single circuit representing the diode, but uh, depending on the input voltage applied, we have two different circuits that are applicable. Well, this is good enough for most of our purposes or uh, uh, analytical and design purposes. Any questions on the equivalent circuit of the diode? The objective is clear. The objective is to analyze the circuits and find out for a given voltage how much of current flows through, etcetera. So, to do that kind of analysis and design, we need this equivalent circuit. Yes, there is a doubt. Because it is uh, not a passive element like a resistance or a or inductor or a capacitor where the applied voltage and current relationship is, uh, uh, is a passive relationship. Here you have some kind of nonlinear relationship which depends on the operating, <coughs> operating point. What is the background voltage you have applied and what is the background current you are operating it at. So, depending on that, the its characteristics changes. Therefore, it is known as an active element plus it does some active functions for us like rectification and things like that. So, that is why it is called an active device. A transistor is an active device, a diode is an active device and so on. Any other question?
Well, let us see uh, under the breakdown condition what is the equivalence R curved. It is interesting to know because we do operate the diodes in the breakdown region also. There are some very interesting applications where we use, we operate the diode in the breakdown region. So, let us see in the piecewise characteristics here you have this kind of characteristics. If you neglect the current reverse saturation current, so this is the equivalent circuit. So, voltage current and this is the equivalent circuit. So, for uh, this is V z and V i is less than V z like this, when V i is like this, what happens to the diode? It gives you a large amount of reverse current for a particular V i. And now, how do you represent it? So, this can be represented by, so or the current flowing is, so V i minus mod V z, right, V i minus mod V z divided by something which has units of resistance let us call it as R z. So, that is the current that is flowing in the opposite direction. So, let me use this as uh, I r as V i minus mod V z by R z. This is the expression. Okay. So, this can also be represented by in the reverse direction. If you reverse the diode now, if you reverse the diode now and express it, so, you will find that, so this is also equivalent to a voltage source in series with a small resistance R z, which is very small and this voltage is V j. So, which is positive. So, that is why I am representing as mod V z. If this is the voltage applied, but this voltage applied is a reverse voltage. this is V i with this side positive and this side negative. When this V i is more than V z in the reverse direction, so it allows a large amount of current and that current is V i minus V z by R z, that kind of current flows. This is minus I r. Okay. What is the value of R z here? What is order of magnitude? It is very small, it may be a tenth of an ohm or a fraction of an ohm. Now, let me discuss about rectifiers. Rectification is a very important application of so diodes. Okay, I started discussing about diode as a circuit element and diode as a circuit element an important application where diode is used as a circuit element is rectifiers. And uh, rectifiers are uh, very popularly used in power supplies of uh, electronic circuits and many other uh, kinds of circuits or even electromechanical devices who use rectifiers as the power source to convert uh, an alternating voltage into a uh, a direct voltage form. Let us see how the uh, diode acts like a rectifier. So, we 
use a diode and the load resistance which we drive is connected in series with the diode and we apply an alternating voltage here. The alternating voltage is usually a sinusoidal voltage with 50 hertz as the frequency in our country. This is the way the voltage varies with time. So, with this kind of voltage applied to the circuit, to the load which is being driven by this kind of alternating voltage, when this diode is, is being used as a series element. So, what kind of output voltage do you get? So, we find that the output voltage we get is the rectified voltage of this type. respect to time. So, the diode clips the negative portion of negative half cycle of a sine wave and it allows only the positive voltage to pass from the input side to the load resistance. So, this kind of operation is known as rectification. It rectifies the negative portion, it clips the negative portion and makes the voltage a positive voltage or a negative voltage if you reverse the terminals. Okay. So, this application is known as rectification. How does it do this? So, this is the output voltage as a function of time. Since the diode acts like except for that small voltage V gamma drop in this and an additional voltage drop. At the most how much voltage gets dropped across the diode for an appreciable, appreciable amount of current? 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 at the most. Okay. With 0.8 volts dropped across itself, it allows uh, rest of the input applied voltage to appear across RL because it is by Kirchhoff's voltage law, voltage drop across the diode plus load voltage is equal to applied voltage. Say you are you have applied say 100 volts at the input, some 0.7 or 0.2 volt uh, drops across the diode and remaining almost 99, the remaining say 99.2 volts drop across the load resistance. That means, the input voltage is allowed to pass to the output. Okay. So, the diode allows it to pass through. Whereas, in the reverse direction for this large amount of uh, uh, reverse potential for during the negative half cycle. So, because the large amount of reverse potential across the diode, some current flows, but that current is the reverse saturation current. As long as this reverse voltage does not go beyond that breakdown voltage. As long as this voltage is less than the breakdown voltage, the what uh, is allowed by the diode is a that reverse saturation current, which is of the order of 1 nano ampere in the case of silicon diode. So, with 1 nano ampere current that is passed to the load, it is a negligible amount of current passed to the load it is almost that no current is passing through the load. As a result, the voltage drop across the load would be <coughs> almost 0. Whereas, the entire voltage that is applied here, the reverse voltage drops across the diode and because the current is very small, so there is almost no voltage drops across the load resistance. Hence, the output voltage across the load would be of this type. Positive voltage is allowed to pass to the load and the negative voltage is almost negligibly small. And during the next positive half cycle, again the diode conducts, it allows the current to pass through and the voltage goes to the load. 
So that's how uh, a rectifier works. And with negligible voltage dropped across the diode, and ideally speaking, now let us see what is the characteristics of an ideal rectifier. So if we want the diode to act like an ideal rectifier, so what type of characteristics do you expect? So for positive half cycles, do you expect zero resistance and zero voltage to drop across the diode and the whole voltage is passed to the load? And during the negative half cycle, so you expect the diode to offer infinite resistance and do not allow any current to pass through. So ideally, the diode, a rectifying diode characteristic should be like this. So like this. So this is voltage. So this is current. Okay. This is voltage. This is current. The characteristics is like this. For positive voltage, even with zero voltage, it should allow current to pass through. For negative voltage, with any amount of negative voltage, the current that is passed that is passed through is zero. So this is the idealized characteristics or characteristics of an ideal rectifying diode. So when the diode is ideal, if the input voltage is an alternating voltage, so which is equal to, so let me say that the voltage is peak voltage is Vm and it is a sinusoidal expression sin omega 0 t where omega 0 is radian frequency of the sinusoid which is equal to 2 pi into 50 hertz which is equal to 100 pi radians per second in our country. In some western countries like US, 60 hertz is used. So where it is 120 pi radians per second. So this is the expression for the uh, input voltage where Vm is the peak voltage. When sin omega naught t is a multiple of uh, uh, is uh, uh, pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 and so on. So you have the peak voltage. So peak voltage is Vm. Okay, at zero pi, two pi, etc. So it is zero. So with Vm as the peak voltage here, I'm sorry here. If this is applied and the diode is ideal, so what would be the output voltage, peak voltage? The output would be a half sinusoid during every cycle and the peak voltage is Vm itself because the voltage drop across the diode is an ideal diode is 0. Therefore, Vm is the voltage drop. So this kind of a rectifier is known as a half wave rectifier. So it rectifies and produces only half wave in the output. For every one cycle, you have half of the cycle present, positive half of the cycle present. Okay, therefore it is known as a half wave rectifier. Well, so now the rectified voltage is like this. So it uh, does not go negative, it is only positive like this. Is it this kind of voltage that is needed in some circuits or some devices, we want constant voltage uh, to operate some, some devices like electronic circuits like I say transistor radio okay, or television. So there we want constant voltage. In which case, this simple half wave rectified voltage is not sufficient. Well, uh, if you look at the half wave rectified voltage waveform, 
so which is like this. So, this can be expressed as some constant voltage plus some varying voltage. So, please look at this, can't this output voltage rectified voltage be written as sum of, so this constant voltage and this time varying voltage. If you find the average of this waveform, so this is the average plus some alternating component with the 0 average. So, this can be expressed in this form. That means, this voltage has some constant in it plus some alternative positive going and negative going some alternating component in it. So, definitely this has some direct voltage, DC voltage with some alternating component. Now, our objective is to reduce this component as far as possible and to retain this. What is this DC voltage I am talking about? It is naturally the average of this waveform and if you apply this voltage to a DC voltmeter. <coughs> So, DC voltmeter, so what the this voltmeter reads, so that is the DC volt voltage. A DC voltmeter gives you the average of this. So, that is what the so, uh, DC component of that and that is this one. It has an alternating component which goes positive and negative, that is this component. So, this is the AC component. So, this is wanted and this is unwanted when you use this as a circuit element. <coughs>